For the second year in a row, the Unity team brought me up to GDC to take a look at all of their new developments and meet a lot of people and have a lot of fun. So today I wanna to talk about what I learned at GDC about Unity specifically and share some of the cool experiences that I had along with a lot of the cool people that I met. I also wanna share a few things I learned about Unity that weren't released or revealed at GDC, but I had completely missed from past Unite events and other launches. Before we dive into all the fun technical stuff though, I did want to mention that for anybody who couldn't make it to GDC, Unity's Unite event has just been announced. It's going to be in November in Amsterdam. I plan on going, I'm not 100% sure, but probably 95% sure that I'll be there. And I hope to see lots of other people there. If you plan on going, drop a comment down below and let me know. Or if you saw me at GDC or happened to go by and, and didn't see me, drop a comment and say hello. All right, let's get started. Most of the technical info I got, I gathered on Monday, and that's because when I first got into San Francisco, Unity brought myself and a bunch of other YouTube creators into the Unity offices to see the presentations in advance, get a little private preview of them, and ask questions so that they could both practice and work on their talks, and we could be prepared to talk about and share what's going on there. And there were a lot of interesting talks. The first one was about user-generated content, and this is something that I didn't even know was coming to Unity, but now it's out in beta and it's a pretty cool advanced system that allows you to both do things like updates for seasonal content or patches that you want to push out without doing a full patch, but also allows your actual users, it is user generated content, to create stuff put that into your own game and then upload that and then manage it through a web portal. And I don't know how deep I can go into the details. I recommend that you try out the beta, get in there and check it out. There's a lot of really cool tech that they've built into this system and it seems like they're gonna be pushing it quite a bit more to make it really advanced. On the gaming services side, they also had the cloud code setup that allows you to run C Sharp code on the cloud. But I thought that it was even more exciting that they've added the persistent data set setup. So right now in the current setup, you could always save off player data to UGS or Unity's gaming services, but it had to be player specific data and specific to that, that player in that game. And now what you can do is actually save off game specific data. So you can have your server save off data about what's going on in the game. It could be anything from the characters for that specific player to the characters in the world, the NPCs and the state of that and what's going on there. And I think that it's a nice kind of, um, it's a nice step in between running your own completely dedicated server. So you can run this as an option or you can run a dedicated server or there are some scenarios where you can mix and match them. But the data persistence, at the very least, to make it very easy for you to do things like leaderboards and cloud save systems. But there are also some good scenarios for actually just building your game server data right in there. It's one of the, I think, most requested features. One of the few things that I really wished was there and I'm happy to say is now coming. The last thing on the UGS side that really excited me was the updates to the multiplayer systems, both the netcode for game objects and the dots version or the netcode for entities. On the netcode for entities side, they revealed the Mega City demo running with 64 players and hinted that it could probably run quite a few more players really easily. So I think that that's gonna be a great place for people to start if you wanna build a dots-based multiplayer game, be able to grab that demo and see what it's like. But for the netcode for game objects, they've now stabilized on that 1.0 version and it's ready for the smaller scale games where you're doing the, I'd say, less competitive, less massive scale stuff. But they also hinted at the the possibility of, and I think I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's coming that we're going to be getting templates for other types of games soon. So we're we'll getting a an NGO template for things like a first person shooter or an RTS or whatever game types that may be. Now I'm really excited about that. I don't know which specific types will come yet. And if you have a preference, um, for which one comes first, please drop a comment down below and I'll make sure to forward that off to the, the networking team there as much as I can and try to try to push for that. Because I think that those demos will make a huge difference for people that want to get started with NGO and want to start building out a multiplayer game. 
Speaking of demos, the new URP sample scene looks amazing. It's actually a set of, I think, four scenes, a base lobby scene that you can run around in that looks really beautiful, a low poly space scene that lets you see kind of how to do those effects and if you want that visual effect, and then a really, really cool Zen Garden scene that shows how to use forward plus lighting and have tons of lights in a really beautiful looking environment. I'm excited for that one, and I don't even remember what the fourth scene was, but I'm sure it was something awesome. There were also a ton of changes to the HDRP setup that have come in 2022 and a couple little things that were coming in 2023, like the six-way lighting for smoke, which gives you really cool lit up smoke effects. But on top of that, they're also giving us the smoke effects themselves so we don't have to recreate and redo all of this work. And if you want smoke, I think that having good smoke effects available by default is probably a cool thing to have. Uh, the other thing that I thought was really neat was the adaptive probe volumes. This is a setup so that you don't have to deal with creating and managing light probes. I've always been terrible at it. I've used assets to deal with it myself in the past. And now the adaptive probe volumes seem like the perfect solution. It kind of automates away all of the problems with setting up light probes properly and allows you to do some really cool things like have these day and night cycles that they've set up with the HDRP setup as well where you can transition between different sets of lighting and go from day to dusk to night and back through it. This is a pretty cool setup and it looked really beautiful along with some of the other things like the fancy new ocean waves, the ray tracing by default, and the really cool new hair shader and eye setup. There's also a new full screen shader graph node that allows you to do full screen effects for URP and HDRP, which I think is one of the few things that was kind of missing from those scriptable render pipelines. On top of that, there was foveated rendering for the PlayStation VR 2, which is something that I remember hearing Carmack talk about a long time ago, and I'm excited that it's finally a realistic thing that's coming to the hardware and the software. But the most exciting things for me at the conference were well, the Unity AI talk that I got to get a special sneak preview on, and I think is going to be really exciting for people going forward. If you haven't signed up for the AI beta, you should definitely go do that so that you stay up to date and get access as soon as they release what it is that they're going to release. And I don't know which things I can talk about, but there were a lot. They've got a lot going on, and it's some pretty exciting stuff that will really, I think, help out game developers. And then the number one most exciting thing that I got to see, which was a lot of game developers and their games. I got to meet tons and tons of really awesome people and see lots of really cool games that Unity was showcasing, like Ship of Fools, or that people were talking about constantly, like Kerbal 2. It's a huge, huge conversation topic there. And games that other people like you were making, like Warlord Britannia, which is doing it amazing and actually interviewed the developer after meeting him at the conference, had a great time and was really impressed with what he's built and that entire process. So if you go to these events, make sure that you talk to people, make sure that you check out all of the cool stuff, but most importantly, talk to people. That's the funnest part. And I think the most valuable thing. And if you go to Unite 2023, make sure that you say hello to me and everybody else that you run into and happen to know or happens to be a game developer. All right. If you got any thoughts on it, please drop a comment down below, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one or maybe at Unite.